Right, this one we've been called out to is a leak on the boiler, the right hand side. Now, boosters normally leak from the right or the left hand side, symbolizing one of the manifolds has gone. But if it leaks from the front right hand side, roughly where that tissue is, <laughs> nah, around here, then it's normally the flow adapter. However, this one's dripping on the uh, PRV connection, as you can see there. So we'll get the cover off and see what it is. I already know what it is. I came out the other day to diagnose it. It's the right-hand block. People, a lot of engineers find this, door, this, this job daunting, but it is the first one or two, but as you get used to them, second, second nature, really. <laughs> I get the cover whipped off. Juniors, you've got a screw here, a screw there, and then a screw up there, and a screw up there, and that's the cover off. It's an old girl, this. Strap the board down using that screw. You can tell it's old by the uh, style of condensate trap. I bet it's 14, 15 years old. Well, that's gonna want cleaning out. It's now unblocked. But yeah, it drips on the back, around here, just behind. Well, right at the back, where my finger is now. I'll show you when we get it out. I'm just gonna shut the water off on the cold valve here and probably leave the heating ones open because this is the highest point of the system. All right, before I do anything else now, I'm gonna drain the boiler off using internal drain point. And I'm gonna recharge the expansion vessel which is at the back here, just to try and clear any water out of the boiler before taking the right-hand block out of us, we'll be constantly getting wet. Pressure's back on zero. That's recharged one bar. Bar. Happy days. Give that a little test with the LDF. Beautiful. It's just sucking a bit of air in through the air vent, so whilst it's doing that, I'm going to undo this condensate trap out and clean it. through later on. I'll disconnect all the electrics, power is off to the boiler, enter out of the way, pump out of the way, undo that cold feed. Oh. There's now a hot tap open downstairs so that's where the water should be going now. And we'll flick out this little clip. Now yeah, that's that out of the way. We'll do the return connection. That was easy, that came off easier than I thought pump out next. Big massive. In fact we'll move that out of the way I think. You stay over there. I'll use that screw. In fact I'll put it no I can't. I'll put it back in. Yeah, pump. Big clip here. Pull that out and do a huge yellow plastic clip off the bottom of the heat exchanger. This pump should go to the left. There goes the water. Put that back over board just to protect it. If I get rid of the vessel now, that should, the vessel hose, that should all come out. Like that. 
and doing it that way, I find it's the easiest way to get access to everything. It's even an easy way to change the PRV. The hardest part now is going to be getting this bypass pipe out, which put a bit of maintenance spray on it, let it soak in. Once we get the PRV out, the plate disconnected. So this screw here is your plate skewing nut. And you've got another screw just at the side of that, which is holding the right hand block to the chassis of the boiler. Pull that clip out now. You'd normally have to pull down. It's easier to see from this side. On that yellow clip to release the PRV out its little holder. But as you can see, it's never been put in in the first place because you see the O-ring. Stick your back in the chest mount while we try and get it out now. See, so we're just wrestling with the bypass pipe, trying to push it and twist it as far over right as possible, and then that, that's it. The right hand block's out. It's coming. PRV as well, so I'm not replacing that. <sighs> I've just got to rebuild the new one. Oh man, that is a belting brew. The size of it. So you wouldn't, this is what you get in box, you get a full bag of O-rings and washers. Right hand box, new diverter valve motor. BEA beautiful. Someone once commented on my last video of doing one of these. What about the bypass? Uh, What's it called? Fuck. Bypass. It's something to do with bypass anyway. Well, it's there inside already. So yeah, you just put the bypass pipe back in and that's your little non-return valve or whatever it is. And that's the PRV for the spoil. Which doesn't come in this box. You have to pay that extra and it's ridiculously priced. It's like 22 quid. That's about 160, 170 quid. It used to be 120. Pre-COVID, standard. Now you can see why they're a bit daunting. <laughs> oh. But once you've got this far, it's usually plain sailing on the way the way home now. Let's make sure you change all your O-rings. That they've sent. Right, so on this, I'm gonna see what the turbine adapter's like, because I've changed this less than 12 months ago. This is the flow switch though, it's behind this. And we're gonna need the return Union off the old one to go in the new one. Seems in alright condition. The nut has started to go a bit perished as they do. But I took it off and gave it a squeeze and it it uh, didn't break. It didn't seem brittle so I'll put that back in. I know they're only like six quid but I haven't got one. <laughs> That's them two pushed back in. Right, let's get this union off. So this is a hard part of this. I see people are reusing the O-ring. It's because it makes it easier to go back in, but no, nah, you don't need to do that. I'll show you a little trick. Hold on. Put them together. That looks like it's the right one. Get rid of the old one. New one on. Grease it up. Silicone grease on that. I'm gonna get it started. I'm gonna try and film this for you because I do need two hands. Be mindful you don't mark the door case like I haven't <laughs> yeah easy as that but that's in now we're going to change the o-ring on this you don't need to see me assume you're doing that change the o-ring on the expansion vessel I'm going to clean up the inside of this and grease it I'm going to clean up the plate where the washers sit and then I'm going to find my grease gun put a little bit of grease 
around here. Can't do it with one hand. A little bit of grease around here, just to hold the plate, new plate washers in position. I'm gonna need to put this in as well. This just stops it rattling against the chassis of the boiler. It's where that's one of the screws fit in. We don't need the bypass blank, that's for CDI boiler. Obviously we've got a bypass pipe, so we do not need that. Then we're gonna be putting things like this weird style washer is what connects onto the bottom of that. I'm upside down now. But that is on the pump side of things. Oh. Need one of them in there. Big massive o ring somewhere for that. That's for the pump. Slides in there, make sure all that's nice and clean. We're just basically just checking everything's clean and replacing all the washers now. Right, all the washers are in. Plate ones on the back, they've been changed, they've been changed. Now we've just got to wrestle getting that bypass back in that hole. Which trust me, without the PRV in and with the new roll rings, it goes in pretty damn easy. All right, let's see if we can do all this one handed. So I'll put the plate screw in first. Just, just start tightening, not tightening up fully because I want things to be able to move find the positions so again with this return nut I'll get that started like that put our clip back in there which I should have sent a new one start off the uh, chassis screw as well our PRV in next. That's our PRV in and clip. Just need to push that yellow uh, tongue dish, I suppose it is, up into position from underneath. I think this is the first time this year I've had uh, took my audio off. Get a sweat on in this uh, attic room. <laughs> so that is that clip back in. It helps if you tap it with a hammer. They can be a bugger to get up, especially if they've never been up in the foot. 14, 15 years of the lifetime of the boiler. Let's get this panel back down. That's our PRV in and done. Right. We've still not tightened up them screws or tightened up the return nut. Because now I've got to try and get this pump back in, which is basically going to slide onto that, that, and that. Of water. There's the three connections it's going to tighten in. I'm just going to put a bit of grease in there. <laughs> right. Hopefully you can see what is going on. There we go. <clears throat> Big massive clip. Lovely. Pump back in. Get the vessel hose back in. Let's guide that return pipe into the top of the pump. Oh. Right now, with that back in position, should be good to tighten up plate screws, chass chassis screw, and that nut. Cold fat peed called peed pipe <laughs> called pipe feed back in now grease up that o-ring obviously we've already changed that fiber washer that should push in there nicely you clip you see it's chamfered on one side so the tip of this is chamfered side goes to the left don't think i'll be able to do it one handed i'm filming put it in on that that side pipe that type angle start get it started on the right hand side first a little bit like that To get you an angle of getting it in. I right, just got a plug, 5 valve motor in. 
flow switch in, get your little umbrella off your old one, and that's going to scoot round on to something like down onto the motor itself just to protect it. Put this condensate trap back in. It doesn't come with a new fire washer, so I just I just normally grease them up again. It's going to be hard to show you on the camera, but didn't need to take the screw out. <laughs> Never mind. All right, trap back in, gauge back on, everything plugged in, pump, diverter, flow switch. This is the old diverter valve motor. Worth keeping them in the van. You never know, you might need one. Just gonna dry everything off underneath here. Got an external pressure gauge. We can actually fill the heat inside first and then check for leaks. The reason why I'm doing this is because the hot tap's still open downstairs. And I'm being lazy. So that's our pressure built up there. No leaky lees. Yeah. That bypass clip needs sorting out. I don't think I even touched that side. So I don't understand why that's pinged out there. Might have been out at the start. I'll have to look at the video to see. Let's get the uh, cold water onto it. Although the cold water side is only that connection, this lot, and the two on the plate. Another one on the plate. So yeah, hopefully we sound and we'll get get it up and running. And that's it. Cold water isolation valve on. Just give that a minute, see if anything starts weeping or anything. I'll get the power back on. That's how I'm gonna get here. It's took me I got here at literally 20 to 11, so it's just, it's just took me an hour and seven minutes, and that's including filming. I can normally do these on an average about 50 minutes. Some are easier than others. I spent probably 10 minutes messing around trying to get that PRV back up. Put it in service mode first, in minimum rate, because obviously it's going to be full of air, it needs to clear its air, I don't want to ramp, put it in, in hot water. Obviously that, that runs at max. the AAV doing its job. Taldrin's good on this. Alright, so far so good. I'm a bit concerned about, you can't see it from here. Can you see it from there? Little crusting. On top of the left hand block, you can just see it underneath the yellow clip. I don't know if that wash has failed or it sealed itself. I'll just advise the customer to keep an eye on that. Let's try the hot water. Right, it's doing 26.9 checks on this. Cover back on. Job done.